Hey there, 302. From muscle cars to Model Ts and modern day beauties, Goober's Garage in Wilmington has it all, and we're going to buckle up and check them all out. Stay tuned, the 302 is taking you on a test drive. It's a treasure of Wilmington. I'm talking, of course, about Goober's Garage, where there are roughly 40 classic cars that are just amazing. And we're here to talk all about it and find out more about the collection. I'm joined by Ken McNaughton. Ken, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, welcome. So, Glad you made it. Thank you. Tell us about the collection. It's vast, it's gorgeous, and it's so shiny, it's about to put my eye out. Well, the collection, the owner has always been very interested in old classic cars. Uh, it, the, the collection grew much faster than any of us ever anticipated. It's, he, he likes anything cool and he likes everything American. And it, it's a very unique collection and it, it's a very diverse collection. It's not just Chevy or Ford or, or Cadillac. There's a little bit of everything here. Um, so when we talk about the owner, we're talking about Vance Kirshner, right? Vance Kirshner owns this, yes. yes. So when did this collection start? Actually, I would say, believe it or not, within the last five or six years. Uh, he always had an interest in old cars. He has his original 73 Roadrunner, which was his first new car he ever bought. Uh, he just works so hard and with his, with his company, he owns a company called Labware, and with his company, he just never had time to enjoy a, a collection like this. And now that he has time and we have somewhere to put all of the cars, he, he's gotten more interested in collecting and he's gone a little bit crazy with it actually. I mean, it's, <laughs> you, you, you see what's here and we, we, we could empty this place and fill it again with the other part of the collection. It's really cool. Some people binge watch, he binge buys classic cars. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. yeah. But it, it, it's neat about how he does it. It's not just the fact that he's able to buy whatever he wants. It's more about the preservation of these old cars, if you will. He wants to keep the younger people interested in these cars. He doesn't just want them to fade away. That's really amazing. Talk to me a little bit about you know, the um, just the work, a lot of these cars, all of the cars, they come, they're in mint condition for the most part, you know, but there's upkeep and they're, you know, 120 years old to, you know, you've got a car here that's just practically brand new. How do you upkeep and maintain so many different kinds of cars? Well, the thing is what we like to do, especially with the older ones, we'll, we, we, buy what we really like and what's really unique and really cool. But after we get it, we have several different uh, mechanics or shops that work on the different various stuff. Like you mentioned, the, the newer stuff, there's one place that works on those. And then the, the old vintage stuff, there's another guy that works on those. We'll, we'll, we'll get everything started and we'll drive it and then we make a list of what it needs. What do we have to do to get this car to be in original shape and function and everything work the way it should? They're absolutely gorgeous. And do you have a favorite or does the favorite rotate depending on the day and your mood? I couldn't ever pick a favorite. I like, I could narrow it down to maybe five. They're also beautiful. I like it a lot of them for different reasons. I mean, there's some in the other room that I like because of the history of them. The, the, they're vintage and the newer ones, I like the newer ones for different reasons. I mean, we, we have a 2020 Yanko that we do land speed racing with. I've ran that car at 203 miles an hour at the Arkansas Mile. Oh, 
Oh, you must just love your job. I, I, I love my job. I have people every day trying to, to, to get in line to, to have my job. But, you know, it, it's kind of hard to compare a 1928 Buick to a 2020 Yanko Camaro. Obviously, I like them for different reasons. Now, we're going to take a deep dive on a couple of the favorites, but I wanted to just do kind of like an overview. There is a gorgeous uh, GTX behind you, salmon color, almost like a coppery. Talk to me about that one's unique. Why? They only made 17 convertibles in 1967. That's the only one that was ever made in copper metallic with a Hemi in it. When I say only made 17 convertibles, 17 convertibles with a Hemi in it. That's, uh, that's a pretty desirable car. Right? There's a lot of people would love to have that car. And then there's a Diamond T over here. Tell me about that one. That's a pretty special truck. That's a 1936 Diamond T, which eventually became Diamond Rio. Uh, that was a Union Pacific railroad maintenance vehicle and that's what the up on it is when vance first brought that over i was thinking it's pretty bad you got to label your which side goes up now but no it's union pacific railroad it's the truck looks huge um, what i found with these old vintage cars and stuff from that era is everybody was much smaller uh, as big as that truck looks You'd be surprised how small inside it is. The, the, the cab and getting in and out of it, it's, it, it's ridiculously small. People just weren't as big as they are now. But on the flip side, you got the blue suede shoes and the fins, the Cadillac. That's so. a 1959 Cadillac, and that is absolutely one of my favorites. That is uh, all original, original paint, interior. It has 18,000 miles on that car. Just amazing. It is amazing. Uh, I would put the ride of that car against any modern day car. It's like floating on a cloud when you drive that thing. It's just such a big, heavy car. It's huge. I mean, the, the craftsmanship, that car was here for six months. And every time I looked at it, I'd pick out a different detail. It's just endless with the, it's got the highest fin of any car, not just the Cadillac, but the highest fin of any car that was ever made. And then you have the, the, the twin bullet taillights on it. it. It's beautiful, the amount of chrome on that thing. It's, how can you not love it? Just whispers your name every time you walk by. Ken, we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna talk more about all of the classic cars at Goober's Garage when we return. I'm Laura Jury, Marketing Manager for Hagley Museum and Library. Come get crafty with me on the 302. Welcome back. We are at Goober's Garage in Wilmington and we're checking out all of the treasures. Now, Ken, red is my favorite color. You have two red beauties here. Let's start with the, uh, the Thunderbird here. It's gorgeous. That is absolutely a beautiful car. That's a 55 Thunderbird. And if I'm not mistaken, that is probably one of the first in recent purchases for Vance as far as this collection starting. Uh, that came from uh, an, an auction in Atlantic City. And it, it's just a beautiful car, absolutely. So it was just the first romance, or one of the first romances for Vance when it came to, to cars that he was able to bring home. Well, it, it's when he started really getting interested and start collecting. Like I said before, he, he always had a passion for cars, but he just never had the time to pursue the, and, and start collecting and, and enjoying them. Uh, I, I think this might have been what was broke the tip of the iceberg there a little bit. Uh, he, he, he bought this and, and this kind of turned into everything else you see here. So when you get behind the wheel of this car, what's the first thing that blows you away? Because there's so much to it. The lines are amazing. It's like it's brand new, but what's the best thing about it? 
I, I don't know if I would call it the best thing, but the thing that has always been really cool to me is the attention that these old cars get. Uh, you're, you're not pulling this car out of the garage and driving down the street without a lot of attention. It's very noticeable. People just like these old cars. It's definitely beautiful. So when you take it out, this is not something you drive to the grocery store. I mean, this is something that maybe you take to a car show. Well, I, I, I'm not sure I agree with that. We, we like to drive them. That's yeah. why, we, why Vance has them. We enjoy driving them. Uh, no, we, they're not daily drivers in, in no sense. Uh, but if I need to go to the grocery store, actually I, I do <laughs> kind of pick what I want to go. They uh, see you come and they're like, oh, well, there's Ken. Yeah, He's going so to get it, some it, bread. It, it's just, it's pretty neat, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I get I get teased a little bit because uh, we, we have a 33 Chevy on the other side and, and I actually, I, I really, I like that car. It's one of my favorites here. And when it first came here, uh, I would use any excuse I could to drive it. Uh, when, during the construction of this place and the diner, if, if I needed diesel fuel for one of the machines that was here, I would load my gas cans in the 33 Chevy and drive to the gas station. And, and, and people just, there's Kenny looking for an excuse to drive one of the sure. old cars. So yeah, I'm, I'm guilty. Now for somebody who, you know, drives an ordinary car, you look at a car like this and you're like, oh, you know, it, it's got to have all this attention, it's got to have all this stuff, but you were saying earlier before we started rolling that newer cars have too much, too much technology, too much uh, of things that might break, but these cars were built to last. Absolutely. These, these cars, they didn't require a whole lot to make them run. Uh, the older cars, and the older they got, the more simpler they were. They didn't have all the computers and the technology, and there was no plastic in any of these old cars. Uh, we, we have some old cars that are 100, 120 years old, and they all still work. If we take care of them and maintain them in another 100 years, they're all still going to work. If we can still get gas for them, that may be the bigger issue, but they all still work. I find it very unlikely that the new modern cars 100 years from now are still gonna work. There's just too much technology and I can't see if that technology starts failing that it would be feasible to, to replace the computers and all the stuff that could actually go wrong with the cars from today. Now I wanna switch gears to the red beauty behind here. That's made by uh, Glasspar? Glasspar with a P. That was actually a boat manufacturer. Um, I believe his name was William Tritt that owned the Glass Par Boat Manufacturing Company. They made speedboats in California. He wanted to produce some cars. They never really took off hot and heavy in the production. I think they maybe made less than 3,500. What's unique about that car is they made less than 100 of that model. But that car has a Cadillac motor in it where all the other glass cars had Ford motors and Ford drivetrains in them. Like I said, they, they never really took off into production. I believe that glass par was more successful after they tried to produce cars in making kit cars. So with them being fiberglass, they were able to just make the bodies for them and sell them as kits. And then people would, would build the cars on the chassis and, and the drivetrains that they wanted. So while it may be a mystery how it got that engine, it's definitely no mystery why people love it so much because it, the lines are just very curvy, very bodacious and just gorgeous. Absolutely. The, it, it, it's one of probably the most commented car and complimented car in this whole building is it's just amazing the, the, the lines on it and the paint job is what really draws your attention to it. Whoever painted that car really knew how to lay paint down on the car. It's, it's amazing. Thanks, Ken. We're going to take a quick break and take a look at some of the older cars in the collection. We'll be right back.
Listen, I'm County Executive Matt Meyer. Maybe you've been to the 215, the 609, the 301, but where it's at is at the 302. Welcome back. We are in the vintage car section at Goober's Garage. And if these cars could talk, what a story they would tell. I'm joined by John Bruton, who is basically the guru who takes care of all the Model Ts and the Packers and everything in this, in this area here. John, thank you so much for joining us. Well, I'm glad to be here. I wanted to ask you first, one of the, the eye catchers right when you walk in is that Huntmobile. Tell me about that. It's got, it's got wood on it. Oh yeah. But that, this is just when they were starting to make for real cars. That This is a, a little four cylinder and uh, we just got it started up just the other day. A little bit of an interesting story on that. Uh, they, they, this has a total loss oil system. Pumps through the, the car and then it, it's done. Well. This one, it built up oil from that into the crankcase, and when it started, it smoked. And we didn't think too much of it. It's, uh, you know, some oil smoke. Well, it ended up filling up the building and setting off the alarms. Oh. <laughs> so so that, was, uh, that was something. We're not gonna make that mistake again when we start them for the first time. We, haven't, we don't know what they're gonna do yet. We'll take them outside uh, uh, until we know how they act and what they're gonna do. And then we go and, and tune them from there. But, that's a really, uh, it's a well-made car. Um, they, they were known for having the, uh, good cars. They had a really good following. Now, the Knox is 1899, and this yes. is the earliest, the oldest car that you have in the collection, yes. right? Yes, yes, and it's just about as old as you'll find in America. It's just amazing how the tech, it's basically a carriage on wheels. It really is. Uh, I, I know from the little bit of research I did, my main thing, I'm just studying what they do. I try to figure out what it is they've done, what it is they're trying to do, and how to make it work the way they wanted it to work. So it took a while on this. It was so far behind the technology we're used to that it was way different than what I was used to. So it took me a really long time to figure out what they were doing and, uh, and get this thing to run. Uh, and, uh, but. Uh, the, uh, for the little bit of research I did, there was 15 total made. So from there, uh, I think there's maybe three of these left. It's really fascinating when you look at this in 1899, and then you go over to the Sears, and both of them utilize a chain and a motor and very rudimentary steering. The steering wheel hadn't been figured out for these things. Well, uh, they, they certainly had by the time the Sears was made, like I was saying, the Sears is way behind in its technology when it was made. Mm -hmm. Sears sold it, they wanted to build something cheap, they built, uh, they used uh, 02, 03 technology to build an 09 car. Uh, air, this is an air-cooled single cylinder, at least that's an air-cooled two cylinder, mm -hmm. and uh, it has about twice, it has about 15 horsepower, where this is about six and a half. Well, it's really cool as you walk down the line of this garage and you see the Ford, the Model Ts, the Buicks, the Dodge Ram truck. That is amazing because I was surprised. I didn't think Dodge made trucks back in the day. Uh, that's about all they, they were known for back in the day. Uh, they were known more for the trucks than they were for their cars, I think. And the hood ornament, I mean, it's a lot sleeker than the one that we have seen in recent it, it, years. It's the Dodge Ram, and you'll see a lot of these old cars, they used uh, really elaborate hood ornaments, and it was part of their way of selling the car. And, and uh, I'm working on a 32 Dodge car right now, and I need that bulldog, that, uh, that, that Dodge Ram that sticks out like that. It's broken off my radiator cap. Um, but yeah, it was uh, very common back in the day uh, for them to have pretty elaborate hood ornaments and radiator caps. You can see how fast things changed as far as the uh, pr uh, uh, improvements on the cars. And so by the time they got to the, uh, the 30s, now you had a hood there, you might have the radiator covered by the hood, so you don't really have a chance to put it on top of the radiator cap. Now they just started putting the hood ornaments on the hoods. And it all started by being on the radiator cap to start with. A little bit of trivia that I had no idea <laughs> about. I wanted to ask you, you have a storied car here, the Packer. What's the situation with the Packer, the backstory? 
Well, it's a, a New York mayor's car from 19, uh, it's a 29. And uh, I know that we have a, a, a Time, Time uh, magazine, had them on the cover in 1930. Uh, and I think the article was about the corruption uh, or uh, a lot of spending in the mayor's office. He was a little too flashy a little for flashy, his own good. And that um, didn't help his image. So it, uh, um, I think that's how it ended up being here in such beautiful condition. He probably just kind of stashed it away and kept it out of sight. You must just love coming to work every day. I do, I do. I, I, uh, I kind of call my own hours. I kind of, it's not like every day, uh, but uh, I, I work at my own place. Uh, I'm semi-retired. So uh, what I've decided to do and what I do do is I do what I enjoy. All these old cars, everything was made to be repaired. Everything was made to be fixed. So you can fix it. I was talking to talk, I know a little earlier about a, a, like, I want the original switch to work. I don't want to replace the switch, I want the original one to work. And usually they're repairable. Uh, yeah, I like everything to function the way it should and I do quite enjoy what I do. Uh, that's the why I do it. <laughs> well, it's obvious that in this room, time stands still and you have been able to preserve the beauty and the essence of when each and every one of these vehicles was crafted. John, thank you so much for spending time with us and talking about all these beauties. Well, I appreciate the, being able to. I, I love talking about the stuff. All righty, we'll be right back. In the future, there are plans for car shows for some of these beauties, but for now, if you'd like to see them, you're gonna wanna check out the Facebook page for Goober's Diner, which is just next door. That'll do it for this episode of the 302. We're gonna leave you with more video of these beautiful cars. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. We'll see you on the 302.